Okay, let's look at experiments by taking a look at this example. Does the color of light affect the rate of plant growth? So you can see that how this is set up, we have different plants here and they're being exposed to different color lights. And they're trying to see if the light affects the rate, the rate or speed, the rate or speed of the plant growth. Okay, so then you'd have typically in an example like this, you might have some questions that follow. Um, with these terms such as independent variable, dependent variable, uh, control group. There's another question below we'll talk about also. Um, so figuring out the difference between independent and dependent oftentimes is, uh, can be confusing and it's hard to remember which is which. So let's just review what those two things are. So we'll start with independent variable, independent variable. Okay, so the independent variable is what's different about the groups. What is different about the groups? So in this case, as you can see, if we look here, we can, we can tell that there's a lot of things that are identical, but only one main difference sticks out. And the reason I chose this is visually you can see it's in this case, it's the, the color of the light that's the independent variable. It's the main difference, color of the light. I should fill that in down here for our answers. So the color of our light, color of light. So that's the only thing that can be different in these groups. That's the thing we're testing. So when you're trying to remember what is an independent variable, it's what's different about the groups. It also can be thought of let me erase this, really don't need it there. It can also be thought of as, um, let's see, what was I trying to say? It's what's different about the groups, but also it is um, what you're testing. What you are testing. Okay. Now, dependent variable, that's the next one. Easily confused, very similar. Um, dependent. So the dependent variable is going to be where the data comes from. This is the data. So think about it as repeating D sounds, dependent data, dependent data, dependent data. So get that into your head. Um, that'll help you remember hopefully which is which. And dependent gives you the data because this is what you measure. What you measure. Okay, so let's take a look at this. What are we measuring specifically here? I underlined the, the word rate up here. So what we're specifically measuring here is the rate, which is, can also be thought of as the speed, the speed of plant growth. Okay, next term. Um, what is the control group in this ex example? Control group. So let's think about what a control group is. Control. A control group is going to be used for comparison. Used for comparison. It represents a normal situation. So you're going to have to have something um, to compare to to see what a normal plant would do in this case for this experiment. So we want to see what a normal plant would do, which looks like the control group. So let's just number them so we can refer to them by numbers. So let's say that this is plant 1, this is plant 2, 3, 4, and 5. So if I asked you which one looks like the control group, you're probably thinking this looks like the normal situation used for comparison. Okay, so we have regular white light here used for comparison. That's going to tell us what a normal plant would do under regular white light. And then these other groups, groups 1 through 4, are going to be called our experimental groups. Those are the groups that we're doing something strange to, new, or different. These um, are going to be the experimental groups, again, 1 through 4. And plant 5 would be our control group. So down here for our answers, we can put the control group as plant 5 with the regular white light. Okay, so if I move this up, there's one more question down here. What are the constants? 
I didn't talk about these this term yet. So let's think about what constants are. Constants. The word constant. What does that sound like? What does that mean? Constant. If something's constant, it doesn't change, right? So the constants in an experiment are the parts that aren't going to change between the groups. These are the variables that stay the same. Variables that don't change. These are going to be the things that have to stay the same to make it a fair test. So if we look at these, these plants and think about what has to stay the same to make it a fair test. Um, same, let's, let's list the things that would make it the same. We would have to have, to make this a fair test between these plants, you'd have to make sure that they had the same, and the, this is all of the same things, right? Amount of water. Amount of water. They would have to have the same amount of soil. Amount of soil. They'd have to have the same um, amount of light. Amount of light. So we know that the type of light or the color of light is different, but the amount of light would have to be the same. The, the power would have to be the same. The power of the bulb would have to be the same. The power of the bulb. You'd have to have them in the same um, type of pot. That could have a difference. So you want to make sure that all of these things stay consistent to make it a fair test between the groups. The idea of doing an experiment, again, is to have one variable that is different in the experiment. That's called the independent variable. And that's going to be the thing that you're testing. So that's the only difference you should see in an experiment. That is the independent variable. You can think of that as a cause and the dependent variable as the effect. So the dependent variable is what you measure. Dependent gives you data. That's what you're going to measure. The control group is the normal situation used for comparison. And constants are those things that have to stay the same to make a fair test. So I hope this review of experiments will help you figure out different parts of experiments when we look at different examples.